If you clicked on this video, you are likely using the OpenAI API as a personally or to build an app that will hopefully scale to thousands of users. But here is the catch. Even though the API might look cheap at first, if you scale significantly, your cost could explode. Fortunately, there is a simple way to drastically cut the cost and improve the user experience by making your app faster, and it's called semantic caching. First, let's briefly remind what is caching and how it works. Caching is like a high-speed storage layer storing frequently used data like results from complex computations, database searches, or pricey API retrievals. Think of it as a key value store. The keys are your requests, and the values contain the resulting data. Here is how it works. Once the data has been requested or calculated for the first time, it's kept in the cache for easy access later. Why? Because the cache makes the following assumption. If you've used that data recently, you're probably gonna need it again for yourself or other users. And when that happens, caching allows you to get your hands on it super quickly, skipping the slow process of recalculating or refetching it. But here is the thing. Traditional caching is too simple. It only works if your requests match exactly, which isn't always practical, especially working with the OpenAI API and models like GPT-4 or others. That's where semantic caching comes in. It's like upgrading your cache to a smart assistant that understands the meaning of requests to complex language models like GPT-4. It doesn't just store the exact question and answer. It stores the essence, the meaning of your question, so it can handle even subtly different versions of the same request. So what's the benefit? Semantic caching can recognize a similar query you've made in the past. It means that it can repurpose earlier responses instead of repeatedly calling the API. And as a result, you save computational resources and keep the costs down. Imagine the following scenario. Suppose two questions. What is AI and how does AI work? have been asked and answered by GPT-4. Those questions, along with their answers, are now stored in our cache. Fast forward to a new user asking, can you define the concept of AI? Normally, this would require another round of querying GPT-4, costing time and money. But thanks to our cache, it recognizes that the question closely matches what is AI. Instead of repeating the costly query process, the cache promptly gets the answer it has stored saving you both time and expenses. And that's super useful. At its heart, our cache uses embeddings and vector databases. So what's an embedding? Simply put, it's a vector that encapsulates the essence or semantics of a sentence. It's like a compact mathematical representation of a sentence's meaning. Next, we have the vector database. Think of it as a vault that houses all the embeddings. Now, here is where the magic happens. Whenever we receive a new request from a user, the cache first calculates the embeddings and then look in the database for closely similar vectors. If it finds a vector that's similar enough, it considers it as a match. The cache then fetches the data associated to this vector, delivering you the response, saving time and money. You can check my other video on using embeddings and vector databases to build powerful chatbots. There is the link in the description and somewhere on the screen right now. Today, we leverage the user-friendly GPT cache library that will help us implement a semantic cache easily. So GPT cache is a helpful library that helps us reducing the cost and improving the speed of response for the applications using models like GPT-4 or ChatGPT. It creates the semantic cache for us and stores the response from the LLM model and returns them rapidly instead of repeatedly call the API. GPT cache even integrates with popular tools like Langchain that allows us to build powerful AI applications. That makes it one of the best tools to implement a semantic cache layer in your AI application. You can find GPT cache on GitHub and simply install it using pip. The library is super easy to use so let's review quickly the official example. There are two key modules to import, cache from GPT cache and OpenAI from GPT cache adapters. Then you simply init the cache and the OpenAI API key. It will pick it up from the environment variables. And that's it. You have nothing else to do. Now, as you use the OpenAI module, it will automatically use the cache and avoid repeating API calls for queries that are similar. The library integrates with many tools to build AI-powered workflows like Langchain, Llama Index, OpenAI, and more. Let's dive in the first demo, where we compare the processing time between using no cache at all and using a semantic cache. The code is available on GitHub. We ask three questions, one after the other. What's GitHub? Can you define GitHub? Explain GitHub. I created a CLI that accepts an argument controlling the cache utilization. No cache or semantic cache. First, we run without cache. 
and we notice that the three queries takes between three and four seconds. Since the cache is disabled, each question trigger a request to OpenAI. Then we use the semantic cache argument. Now we notice that the first question takes three seconds to process. Then the two others take less than one second to proceed. The cache works. The first question triggers a call to OpenAI and the cache saves the answer. For the two other questions, the cache detects that they are semantically close to the first one and simply reuses the cached answer. While semantic caching offers many benefits, be mindful of a few pitfalls. First, let's consider queries like what's tomorrow's weather. Such time-sensitive prompts need daily caching to avoid giving stale answers, because the answer depends on the day. So it's not as straightforward to use a cache here. A cache takes up storage. Yes, you're saving on API calls, but you must also manage the cost of growing data storage. Finally, semantic caching works with a similarity matrix that is used to compare the similarity between different prompts. The metric returns a score as a number, and you need to define a threshold above which you consider two prompts to be equal. So adjusting your similarity threshold is crucial. Set it too high, and you could miss cacheable responses. Set it too low, and you risk pulling irrelevant cached answers. So it's important to play with the threshold and tune it for your application. Doing so can be challenging, so we are going to build a web application that will help us visualize the cache and how it measures the similarity between prompts. Stay tuned as it will be the topic of the next video on my channel. In the meantime, check out my video about transforming any website into a powerful chatbot using OpenAI and Longchain. You'll learn what you need to know to materialize your ideas into an AI app that will hopefully scale to thousands of users. See you in the next video.